All right, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's Tuesday night, October 11, 2022. We are here at Apostolic Deliverance Temple Church for Bible class, where we go into the Word of God, expound on it, give us better understanding of the vision of the Word of God, and help us grow more and more in the Word of God, and help us grow in our spiritual life also, because we really need to grow, especially in these last evil days. Um, the deceiver is, he's working overtime. And if we're not careful, we'll be caught up and be deceived just along with the deceiver. So, you know, we don't want that to happen. And I'm doing like Pastor Logan said, trying to reach out and touch somebody else so they can be on board with us too. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. So before we start, let's go and have a word of prayer. Gracious and most kind, Father, we thank you for this day, this opportunity to magnify and bless your name. We thank you for being God, for our being our keeper, our provider, our way maker. Lord God, you allowed us to be here in the land of living another day, another time, and another hour. It was no goodness of our own, but we thank you for your grace and mercy that's renewed each and every morning, Lord God. Now bless the Bible class on this evening. Bless those that are coming in. Bless those that are tuning in online, Lord God. Bless us, Lord God, that we'll open up our hearts and our understanding to grasp your word more and more, Lord God, because we know it's your word that we need to keep us and sustain us yes. in these last and evil days, Lord God. My Lord and my God, bless the presenter on this evening. Encourage her heart and her mind, Lord God. Let her seek for you more and more, Lord God. Let her be involved. Let her be in the word of God, not just saying it, but living it, Lord God, so she can be an example to others, Lord God. Now let this word go forth on this evening, Lord God, that it might manifest itself in our hearts, Lord God. We ask these blessings in your name. We pray. Amen. 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 So we are continuing our talk about the church dispensation. We have gone through, I'll give you a quick recap if you're joining us. This is probably about part four. We talked about the first one, which is innocence, which dealt with Adam and Eve in the garden. And then once they sinned and ate of the fruit, we went into the dispensation of conscience, which covered Adam and Eve, and Noah, Tower of Babel, uh, Abraham, and then after that we went into law. The next dispensation would be law and the prophets, which would be Moses, and then the prophets, all the way up to the last prophet, which was John the Baptist. And now we're in the ch we pass through the church age, which is the, which the dispensation we're living in now, the church age where the word was given to the Gentiles um, because the uh, Jews. Israel rejected Jesus, even though the church, the word was open to everybody. The church for at least the first 30 years was a mixture of both Jew and Gentile. And then later, because Paul only preached specifically to the Gentiles, it became a Gentile church. So the church is now a Gentile church, and we're the church age. And when you look at Daniel's dream about the 70 weeks, we're the in-between portion between week 69 and 70. That's where we're at right now because Daniel's dream was only about the children of Israel. And then after the church age generation, uh, dispensation is the dispensation of the tribulation, which we talked about. And last week we talked about the first half of the tribulation, which we, um, uh, we um, some of the points are that it's the first three and a half years as the last part of Israel's great whooping. Um, because they defied God and disobeyed him, He's given them a whipping, and, he, and this is the first three and a half years of the tribulation. It's the last part of their whipping. Um, that's when the Antichrist comes on the scene, and we talked about how he comes with power, um, and, the, and the Bible says horses, and horse represents power, and he comes with um, fake promises, and then he deceives the people, and then he brings um, war and bloodshed, and then there's going to be famine and food rationing, and then there's going to be much death. And then one of the things that's going to happen in the first three and a half years is the sincere people, those people that have not heard the apostolic doctrine, those people that have not been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, they are going to be seeking, and we read the scripture in the book of Amos, for the truth of the word. And then they were going to be caught up. And that number is a number that no man can number. But they're going to be caught up into groups. They're going to be caught up. Those will be beheaded and those that will have to starve to death because... You can't sell them by without the market so they will starve to death so they will become up now remember those of us that are raptured up which starts the tribulation we are called the bride of christ those that come up afterwards in the tribulation they're the wedding party now i know y'all be like god has a hierarchy you know what yes he does 
but the hierarchy is not is not like a different. It's just that we're that caught up. We're the church. We're the bride. We will reign with them. They will the 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 wedding party will be those that worship him and live, but they will be in heaven too. That's why there's you don't know how many will be in heaven. Um, so it will be a numerable number in heaven. It's just that the number that will be caught up in the rapture from the time of Adam until the rapture is 100 million people, and that's in the Bible twice. It's in Daniel and it's in Revelation. That's 100 million people. But that's not a lot of people if you think about it. If there's been about 8 billion people in the world and 100 million from the time of Adam to now, it's not a lot of people. And we know in this church age, which we talked about, in a previous lesson, this is the church age where the least amount of people are going to be saved. This is the Laodicean age, the rights of the people, and because people don't believe the word of God, and that's one of the main causes of why people will miss the rapture in the church, because they don't believe the word of God 100%. You've got to believe God 100%. His word is what he gets. If you don't believe his word 100%, you won't be saved. You can't take away from it. You can't add to it. You can't give your own opinion. You have to believe the word of God 100%. And that's going to help you be saved. You have to be like the man said, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. we got to get to that point where we say, Lord, I'm reading the word of God. I don't have an understanding. Help thou. Make it clear to me. Explain it to me. But if you know this day we live in, we, we all know everything. We, we all know. we got to get back to that. I need to ask questions. So before we go into our lesson, I had this thought came to my mind. So, you know, we always say the devil, the, and the scripture says in Revelation, the devil is accuser of men. But we know the devil can't be in all places at one time. You know, he's not omnipresent like God. But let me think about that. I'm, I'm going to put this thought out to you and make you think about something, make you say, um, we don't know how many angels there are, right? It's, a, it's an infinity number of angels. Yet Satan took a third of those. So what's a third of infinity? It's infinity. So we don't know how many angels he has working for him. So that makes you think about it. He's not, he, the devil can't be in one place at one time. But you don't know how many angels he has watching you that knows your every, your action. How do you think? Because he's watching you. And he go, they go back and tell Satan. That's the, the device. Because sometimes you wonder, how does Satan know that? Because his angels are watching. If he had took a third of infinity, that's an infinity amount of people that can watch you. Just something to think about. It's not in the lesson, but it just came to me this week. That make you think about it. Because sometimes we think, well, you know, that devil can't be in all places. Like, yeah, but he took a third of infinity with him. That's right. So if he took a third of infinity with him, that's a lot of people that can watch us. He might not be watching us because he can't be in all places at one time. But, he but his, his angels, he got his minions, his angels. See, we, 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 we got to open up our mind. It says it in the Bible. We just got to look for more of it. So now we're going to look at the last half. And the last half is God's wrath on man because of their unbelief. Now, I didn't write this scripture down in our scripture list, but I want you to write it down. Um, there's two scriptures because I know people always ask, especially those that are in the church, well, if I miss the rapture, can I be saved? So I'm going to give you two scriptures to help you with, when I say this hard. No. The first scripture is in the book of Jeremiah, and it's not on your list. Jeremiah 12, 5. If you heard, if you've been in the church, especially that Baptist church, anytime you've heard it. But I want to read it for you so you'll get the, the gist of why I'm going to say a hard note. Jeremiah what? 12, 5. And it's a hard note. It's, it's, a, hard, it's a note stamped in concrete on, on a table ground. It's a hard note. So Jeremiah 12 and 5 says, If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if the land of peace wherein thou trustest, they weary thee, how then wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? Now think about that. Right now we're the footmen. We're, we're, not, we're dealing with each other. We're dealing with everyday people. We're dealing with ourselves. People, if this is tiring to you, how are you going to dwell with more power? People with a rapidness. You're not. And if we're in a land of peace, I mean, we, there's war, but basically it's peace. It's a time of peace. Because there's going to be confusion and chaos during the tribulation. How are you going to do? So they said when Jordan swelled out of his banks, you couldn't do nothing. 
So how are you going to do when there's more torment, more, more tripping? So there's, there's one scripture for that hard note. The next scripture is this, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. So remember when Paul wrote his letters, he was writing to the churches, which means he was writing to people that were what? Saved. So we got to get out of that month. He's writing, and this, no, he's writing to the churches, to people that are saved. So when you look at Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. And it reads, and then, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his tongue, his mouth, excuse me, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That wicked is the Antichrist, we know that, the devil. Even him whose coming is after the work of Satan, with all powers and sign and lying wonders. Ever say he's gonna come with lying wonders. But this is the part we gotta we gotta pay attention to. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Those of you that are in the apostolic truth that are not receiving the love of the truth, you're not believing the Bible. You're not believing the word of God. You're not believing in how it's presented. That's what he's talking to. The, you're going to be deceived. And then verse 11, this is where he's going to get you. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions. It's not, it's not going to be a, you're going to actually believe that the Antichrist is God. That they shall believe a lie. And then let's go to verse, I should have put the 12 too. That they might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So he's talking to you people that are, those of us that are in the church, that don't believe the word of God, that are just coming, that are pure warmers, is the best way to describe you, that don't believe the word of God, who have our own agenda. When the Antichrist comes, the Lord is going to allow you to believe a strong delusion. You're going to believe that he's God. So again, my word to you, if you are baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you miss the rapture, it's a hard no. It's a very hard no. I just gave you two scriptures. It's, it's, a, it's a no in concrete. You know how when you watch games and movies and they put, they put them in concrete and throw them in the water? It's, it's that kind of no. You ain't going to get out of this no. So I just wanted you to put that because I know people always say, well, you know, we're going to get another chance. No. One and done. It's almost like the NCAA tournament. One and done. So now let's look at the last half. So the last half, God is getting back at world because the world doesn't believe who he is. And in the last half of the tribulation, the last three and a half years, no one will be saved. So our first scripture will be in the book of Revelation, chapter number 8, verses 1 through 3. And God's judgment on the earth is, is deep. So when we get into it, it's, it's, it's not like when he did the first half for Israel, there was the seven, what's up, seven seals? Yeah. Six, yeah. No, this is, this is, uh, it's the trumpet and then the veil. So he, he goes right after us. So Revelation 8, starting with verse 1, and it reads, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar, and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels and the seven angels which held the seven trumpets prepared themselves to be to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees were burnt up, and all green grass was burnt. So the first thing is going to be hail and fire mingled with blood. So that means a third of the trees and all green grass will be burned up. So right now in Minnesota, we're dealing with the drought because we live in Minnesota. Uh, but just think, if you, when you travel up north, if you go up 35 going to Duluth, 
Just think of all those trees, a third of them will be burnt up. So look, let's look at the wildfires in California. You see the wildfires out there. Just think of that, because California is a, is a fifth of a, a fiftieth of the United States. So let's look at the divided United States into quadrants. So let's just say the western half from Texas on west will be burnt. Nothing green would be growing out there. That's the best way to describe it. I mean, I don't have a map, but just say a third. And it's gonna be hell fire mixed with blood. I don't know about you, blood, blood stinks. I mean, old blood. old blood stinks. So you got hell coming and fire. Hell, we see it here, it didn't say what size. When it hits you, hell hurts. It's, it's not like, ooh, it's a, it's a hurt. So you got fire burning up and hell. That, and that's the first trumpet. The second trumpet, verse eight, and the second angel sounded, and there was a great mountain burnt with fire, was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. So blood of a stagnant blood. And then, oh, let me go on. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. So that means blood, the stagnant blood of a dead person, of a dead man, which stinks, is going to be in the oceans, the seas. So that means your, your sharks, your, your, your dolphins, your whales, your, sh your shrimp, let me, let me, your tuna, those eats. A third of that is going to be dead. No more sushi. The salmon, no salmon is fresh, but I know that but it's dead, because a third of that is going to just stink, and then it's going to destroy a third of the ships. That naval ships, ships out there fishing, yeah. But notice this, he didn't say it was going to stop. So the hell and the fire and the third is still going on. It's just adding on. It's just adding on. So now, we got the hellfire, third of blood, grass is burned up. Then we got the sea. So we can't we, we can't we can't go to coastal sea seafood and get no seafood because the third and this is nationwide is blood. The third trumpet, verse 10, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it was a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of that star is called Wormwood. And the water, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the water because they were made bitter. So Wormwood is a, is a bitterness. So the fresh water became bitter. So Lake Superior would be bitter. The Mississippi River, bitter. And we couldn't drink it. So that, that affects you as humans. Now when the fish, you'd be like, oh, well, you know, I don't eat fish. I don't just have to. But now he's got the fresh water, a third of that, bitter. You can't drink it. Now the fourth one, verse 12. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. So there's a third part that's just dark. So there's eight hours of total darkness. I'm not, I'm not talking about midnight darkness. I'm talking about black, I'm talking about black, black. Like not when you go up there at 12 o'clock at night and you can see a light, total darkness. And it's gonna be a, so it's almost gonna be like, it's gonna be part of the day will be black. The part of the night would just be black. So you can't see nothing. And now let's jump down to Revelations, um, well, let's finish 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe to, to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of, of the three angels, which are yet to sound. So we have darkness, fresh water is bitter, a third of the fresh water, the sea water is bitter, hell on fire. And he talking about whoa, whoa, because there's three more trumpets to be sound. 
Now, if that ain't scared you, three more trumpets. Now we're going to jump down to chapter 9. Starting with verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and saw a star far from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, and as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. So this is the opening of the lake of fire. So this will let you know the lake of fire is on earth. An angel opens up the bottomless pit. Um, in Zechariah chapter 5, you can read it for yourself. The land of Shinar is the land where the Garden of Eden was, the Tower of Babel was built, and where Abraham is from. That's where the um, bottomless pit will be at. That's where hell will be at. The scripture calls it the bottom of the pit, but we know that as hell. So then let's jump down to verse 3. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and upon them was given power as the scorpion of the earth has power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the green of the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree but only those men which had not the seal of God in their forehead. So now this is, this is you're going to be like, the, the seal of the mark. mark. The those, seal those, mark. those that have the mark. He's talking about those that have the mark. But if you read it, you'd be like, that is, this is, it's, it's, if you don't have the mark, you have the seal of God. But if you do have the mark, you have the seal of man. So those that have the, the mark, He's going to torment them. Now, this is it because in all the other scriptures, we don't have a time. But if we jump down to verse 5, and it says, And to them was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as a torment of a sting when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to, to die, and death shall flee them. And the shape of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were crowns like gold, and their faces were the faces of men. Now remember, Paul, John is seeing this, and he's giving it in descriptions of what he knows. So we don't know what it really is. Like. No, we don't. Yes, ma'am. So, so there's I know there's the mark of the beast but then there's also God seal there's so those, those people that don't have the mark remember he's okay. hid he's hid a portion of Israel, Israel. okay and yeah. that so that those people all what's this no he's hid a portion of Israel and that's who the antichrist is really seeking seeking to them fine he's fine so he's just going after everyone because he's seeking them and he doesn't know where they are yeah. But God is destroying earth, and he's saying anybody that does have the mark of the beast in his forehead or hand or wherever it is, this is who you're going to torment for five months. So look at, he's telling the locusts not to torment in anything that's not man. Because he said any green thing, any, um, but only those men. So that means no animals, will he'll be, he won't be targeting animals. He'll only be targeting men that have the mark of the beast. And it's a torment for five months, and the torment is going to be so great that you're going to want to die, but you can't. And it's not, so you're going to be like, well, I can run to the hospital. He's tormenting everybody. So the people, the doctors, the nurses in the hospital, they're going to be tormented. And remind you, you don't have no fresh water. You ain't got no seafood. It's hell and fire. A third of the green grass is burned up. This is some... Um, tremendous things. So the locust army, this is, uh, this is some facts, will be about 200 million. That's a big army. That's a, that's a big army. Um, verse 8 and there, um, and verse 8 and verse 9 through describe what they look like. Oh. Is that that what Brandon has sent you? No, that was Nebuchadnezzar. And I'll have to talk about that when we finish this because Nebuchadnezzar did the, the thing. Um, and they had hair as a hair woman and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it was breastplates of iron 
and there's the sounds of their wings was like the sounds of chariot of many horses run into battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and their sting in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is an angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. Abaddon? Yep. But in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon, which Apollyon means destiny. One woe is past, and behold, there comes two more woe hereafter. All right. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the six angels, which had the trumpet loose, the four angels, which are bound in the great river of Euphrates. So remember, Euphrates divided the ancient world from the current world. It divides the east from the west. So, um, so Israel is on the e east, and, yeah, and everything past Israel basically is on the west. So it's divided, and there's a purpose for why that is divided because um, Russia gets a lot of its water from the Euphrates. And the Euphrates has a major part. It, it's funny how it, we, we take God for granted in some things, but the way He set things up. So, verse. Um, 15, and the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And here's that army. And the number of the army of horsemen was 200,000 thousand. That's 200 million. And I heard the number of them. And when I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat upon them had blood plates of fire and of jonix, and brimstone, and the head of the horses were as the head of lions, and out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three were the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issue out of their mouth. So right now the angel has slain a third part of man. Remember, they couldn't die for five months. Now he's gonna kill a third part of them for one hour, one day, one month and one year. So 365 plus 30 is what? 395 plus one is one 396 and an hour. So it must be significant in there. Let's look that up. I don't know what that. So a year, we say a year is 365 days in a year. But if you do it the other way, it's 360. 360. So 360. Plus one day, plus one month, which is thirty, plus one day. So it's twenty-four hours in a day, right? Yeah. Plus one more hour. Nine thousand three hundred eighty-five. Can't divide it by. Can't divide it by. But that's nine hundred three hundred eighty-five hours. Hours. Nine thousand. If you divide it, if you do it like that, that's, a, that's you, if, I mean, because sometimes you think, oh, time goes by fast. And I think at that time it was going to go by slow. I mean, I know we say, we say, oh, it goes by fast. Like right now, it's, it's already October. We're almost, but I bet you that time is going to it's going to be like slow. Like a woman in labor. Yep. It's it gonna, seems like people say, oh, you did went fast. No, I didn't. Because I was in pain. So it's a different. I'm serious. It's like because you're in pain. No. And, you, and you're going to be in pain because a third. So that means if there's there's four of us in here, a third of us dying would be three of us die. And one here. And one here. So that's that's scary. You already couldn't you die for five months. To come in. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you, you already couldn't die for five months. Now, these, these creatures, that's the best way to describe them because we don't know what they really look like, is going to kill a third of man for 9,385 9, hours. Wow. I, I told you, the word of God, you, when you look at it and you're talking about you want to play church, you can't. Because this right here is scary to me. I can't eat or drink. It's darkness for eight hours of the day. And I'm talking about black darkness, where you can't see nothing. <laughs> so what you gonna do? You basically you stuck. You it's the pandemic all over. You stuck in your. 
in your own house, but in darkness. In darkness. And I hope you stocked up with some canned goods because you and you eating them out of the can. But even with that, when we talked last week, you're gonna have to deal with rodents. You're yes, rodents, rodents killing you and, and all kinds of stuff. It's not gonna be an easy thing. Um, let's go down. But the power. Let's see. Let's jump down to verse 20 and verse 9. And it says this. Now, this is a scary part for me. And the rest of men which were not killed by these pleas, yet repented not of the works of their hand, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So man is not going to repent. All this is happening, and he's still not going to repent. So that's, mm, well, you know, that's, that's some deep stuff. So then our next scripture, man does not repent, and... Let's go to, I know it says on the, on the thing, uh, Isaiah, I mean, Revelation 11, 14. But let's jump down to Revelation 14, 6 and, is that it? No. 14, I to, 14, 6 and 8? No, I wanted to get to the next seven plagues, the next seven. Is that I 17, have, 1 through? I'm trying to see. That's the vowel 18. So it must be, yes, 17, 1 through 8. Remember we said last week, I know I said, I just read quite, you can't read it in um, order. Order. All right. The last seven plates. Okay. I had one of those days at work today. I was trying to do this, but work was. This says the last seven. Was it eighteen? Oh, okay. just thirteen. Mm -mm. Twelve stars. Think, and, and the twelve stars is um no. I don't want to jump right into the, the veils are in um, 15. So that's the beast. Yeah. So maybe it is. Maybe I did write it down. Um, there's one of the church I work on. I'm telling um, Because um, 17 talks about Babylon, which is... Um, the false church and the master intimidator. I saw maybe it's in here. It's the door to jump that jumps to the battle of Armageddon. I wanted to get right to the does it say in the wine press? No, we were in fourteen, right? No, we were. In. No, we were in um, nine. We just were in nine. We were supposed to go to 11. Maybe that's it. Maybe I did. Or 14 and 15. I thought okay. we did those last week. And 11. So 11 is verses 14 and 15. You did those last week. Yeah, I thought so. Chapter 16 goes right into the vows, which is the, um, maybe there were only, no, I thought there was a sixth trumpet. Oh, 
it the seventh the trumpet. trumpet. Yeah. The seventh trumpet is the is the final woe, yeah. woe, woe. Which, which jump to the which will take us to God's final wrath, which is the seven vows. Let's go to fifteen. No, sixteen. So we're not going to eleven. No, no. I'm a, I'm gonna come back to that. Well, let's go to Revelations chapter. Um, I'm looking right at it. Sixteen. I don't have it on there. That's what it is. I don't have it on there. So after that, that it th threw me off. Um, so the seventh trumpet goes into the the final woes, which the the veil. So let's go to Re Revelation chapter sixteen, and it's the whole chapter. Maybe they said something that never repented of them. So now it goes into the, yeah, it goes right into the wall. The, 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 the walls go into the, the veils. So Revelation chapter 16, verse 1, and it says, I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the veils of the wrath, wrath of God upon the earth. earth. And the first veil, the first went and, and poured, poured out his veil upon the earth. earth. And, and there, there fell a noise in, in the group. Grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them that worship his image. So now, sores have now fallen upon men. They have sores. Those with the mark of the beast? Those with the mark of the beast. They have sores all over their body. Yeah. Verse 3. And, and the, the second, second angel poured out his veil upon the sea, and, and it became as the blood of the dead man, and every, every living soul died in the sea. Now remember when he first did it, only a third. Now the other two thirds. So now, where well, you might have been able to get some tuna and some shrimp, you ain't getting nothing out of the sea. No octopus, no calamari, no squid. The, the seas and the oceans are dried up. Verse 4. And, and the a third, third angel poured out his veil upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and, and was and shall be, because thou hast judged, judged thus. For they have, have shed, shed the blood of saints and prophets, and, and thou hast given them blood to drink. For they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Remember last week when we read, and those that got killed, and they said, Lord, avenge our death. He's, a, he's, this avenging, is what, he's avenging their death. Because now he's turned both sea and fresh water to blood. So now you can't eat. You can't drink nothing. Mm -hmm. And you can't fish. Mm -hmm. So no walleye, no salmon, no trout. You can't fish. No crawfish. Because of your fresh water is turned to blood. That's what we get. Look at the, the incident down in Jackson. That water is contaminated. They can't drink it. Now imagine that water is blood. You can't drink it. And that's going to be across the whole earth. And still man is still not repenting. Um... The fourth veil, verse 8. And, and the fourth angel poured out his veil upon, upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And the men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over the plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Now he burning them up with the sun. All y'all that want to get suntans, now would not be the time. So he's making the sun heated seven times hotter for seven days. And yet, man, we just see right now, man still does not want to what? Repent. Repent. There's something about that repentance. I mean, I know I talk about it a lot, but we got to get to the place where we know how to repent. Repent. Even those of us that are in church, don't let that sin stay on you. Verse 10, the fifth veil. And the fifth, fifth angel, angel poured, poured on his veil upon the seat of the beast. 
and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they now their the tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. That means they darkness. Tongues. And now it's dark. You done scorched us. You done, we don't have no fresh water. We ain't got nothing to eat. We got sores. And they still blaspheming God. And then the sixth angel poured out his veil upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof dried up that the way of the king of the east might be prepared. So the king of the east is coming because now they have no water. And the king of the east is the dragon. The war is coming. Now you have to remember, once he dried up Euphrates, that messes up Russia, who's the king of the north. It also messes up the king of the south, which is the Arab nations. So all three of these things are coming together to fight each other. But their, their fighting is going to change because um, in verse, I'm trying to read my notes. Um, the mouth, yeah. And then I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophets. For, for they, they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go on forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of, um, of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed he that watches and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked and see his shame. And he gathered them together in a place in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Now verse 17. And the seventh angel poured out his veil into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thundering and lightning, and there was a great earthquake, such as not since men was upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great that the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nation fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of the of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, even stones about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of hell, for the plague was therefore exceedingly great. So these means these talents, excuse me, were heavy. Um, these talents weighed about 100 pounds. So you imagine the hail falling from the sky, weighing 100 pounds, you, you was about to die. You was about to um, uh, be killed. But man is still what? Cursing, cursing God. God. He cur he's going to curse God. So the Battle of Armageddon is basically those three atmospheres, the, the King of the East, which is the Antichrist, the King of the North, which is Russia, the king of the south of Darby coming together and they're going to fight each other. Then they turn and to fight God. And God is going to fight with what? The word of God. The word of God. He's going to just speak it. We are going to be with him. Now, um, I don't know where it's in Ezekiel, but man just picks up anything he can to fight God. And when he finished slaying man um, in Ezekiel, Five sixths of the earth will be dead. dead. But it's like he says, it is done. He said that once before. Yep, it is done. When he was on the cross, it is finished. It is, it finished. is finished. So it's the same concept. It's the same concept. It's done. So when he fights the battle of Armageddon, his feet are going to touch down. He's going to make like an L. And um, the blood of man is going to be so deep that. They describe it, and I don't have it in here in Ezekiel. That is like, if you ever see them when they press wine, mm -hmm. make grapes, and it stains you. His vintage is going to be stained with the blood of man, because the blood of man is going to come knee deep to a horse's bridle. So a horse's bridle is up here. So if a horse is standing, and a horse is taller than it was seven, let's say a horse is seven feet, so it's going to come to his bridle. So it's going to be about, let's say six five. So it's going to be blood as high as Uncle Albert for those my brother Albert. Blood that high, a man's blood. 
and only a fifth of the world is going to be, fifth of man is going to, to live. So then after that, we're in the tribulation, we're going to, we're, we're, now we're after the battle of Armageddon, everything's destroyed. So now we're going into the millennial reign. So what is about the millennial reign? The battle, everything destroyed, and now it's going to be a thousand years of peace, and he's going to set up his kingdom where? Here. Jerusalem. Well, Remember, yeah. yeah, in Jerusalem. And one of the things about that is that man has to come back to, um, he has to come back to worship in Jerusalem. And that's where he's going to. That's why he has to save a part of Israel. Israel has to be saved because they have to show man how to worship because it's different. And we will be, remember the, the lion will lay down with the, the snake. It will be peace and we will be go, go back to being vegetarians because the curse of Noah in the day of kind of, one of the curses that came out of Noah's day was that man, animals became afraid of man and we were allowed to eat man. Well, he's gonna take away that curse so now we will no longer eat man, and animals will no longer be afraid of us. Because it's a thousand years of peace. He's reverting back to the, the day of, of that man. But he didn't say sin will be wiped out. The, the beast will be loosed, we be bound up for three and a half years, now in the millennial reign. So the first people that go into the lake of fire is the Antichrist, which is the fall, and the false prophets. So, the Antichrist is the, the person that the devil got into. The false prophets are the minions that put out his work. So, it's like this. The Antichrist would be the pastor, and then the minions would be the elders, the followers that, that dictate what the Antichrist says. Those will be put into the lake of fire first. So, they'll be put in there before him. Satan will. Satan will be bound for a thousand years. That's how we have the millennial reign. It doesn't mean sin will be wiped out because only a six of the world will be a six of the world will be left. So there's going to be people that have what cursed God still alive. There are going to be people that didn't believe God was God. They're they're already lost, even though they live this out. But he's going to let man live for a thousand years. So he, because he, he still has, he's God has compassion. That's yeah. the best way to say it. He has compassion on those that are still on the earth. So, um, but at that point though, too, now I don't know if I remember the Jews, he still, he, yeah, so he also has to come back. Remember they separated. So he has to come back to, to the 10 tribes that were lost. Mm -hmm. So he's coming back for the ten tribes that made up Israel. Because he came to the ten, the two tribes that made up Judah. Now he has to come back for the other ten tribes. So that's what the millennial reign is about. One of the things that's going to happen during that time is that man is going to have to come to Jerusalem every year to offer up, to worship to the Lord. And if they don't, then for a hundred years, their fields will not receive rain. So it's like this. I go up to worship every year. Pastor Logan goes up to worship every year. Brother Brandon goes up to worship every year. But Sister Toya says, you know, I'm not going this year. We all come back home. We go up again. Sister Toya, I'm not coming. Our grass is green. Hers is brown. We eat. She's not. She's not. See how he deals with us differently? All you have to do in the millennial reign is come to Jerusalem and worship. There's no but you know, most people will be like, well, how am I going to get there? He's going to make it accessible. He's, no, it is. I, I mean, no, you he, are right. People, because it's going to take them seven, seven months to bury all the dead. And I didn't think we'd get this part tonight, but I'll have all these scriptures for you next week. But he's going to take them seven months to bury the dead. It's going to... And people are going to, we're going to be an agricultural country. Uh, uh, it's going to be agricultural. Now, those of us that are caught up with him, we will be in heaven. And, and we also will be able to come to earth because we will have our celestial bodies. And we'll be able to see this. You know, we'll be able to talk to people and stuff. Because when Jesus had a celestial body, he could talk to people. 
you know, it probably encouraged him. He, it doesn't say this scripture, so I don't want to put words in the Bible. But, you know, nothing I'm going to do was right. But people are going to be people. And yet, people will be able to see the Antichrist and the false prophets in hell. So that should be a, a, a thing. So the Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years. But even in this thousand years, they didn't say God is going to wipe out sin. The, the only recommendation for this thousand years is that you have to come to Jerusalem to worship the Lord. He's going to sit on the throne. Then after the thousand years, Satan's going to be loose for a season. And the season is three and a half years. You're going to say, how did I come with this? God will never let this adversary do more than what he did. And Jesus was a priest for a minister, a priest for how long? Three and a half years. So he was going to be loose for three and a half years. And then that loose, he's going to go out and deceive the world. And there's going to be many people that follow him because man is gullible. So right now he is the lion. He's the lion. When he's in the tribulation, he is the lamb. I mean, he's right now he's a lamb. I got it back. When he's in the tribulation, he's the lion. He's going to be the lion of Judah. Then after the uh, millennial reign, a thousand years, three and a half years, so just come the three. Then there is, he's not going to do another battle. He's just going to speak fire, and it says that in Second Timothy, burn up the whole world and the water. And then there's going to be the white throne judgment, and we'll be judging there with him. And he's going to have the sheep and the goat, and he's either going to say. Well done, my good and faithful servant, or not. You'll be cast into it. And then there, that will be going to the what day? What day are we in now? We're in the last. We're in the sixth day. Oh, we'll be in the seventh day. We'll be in the seventh day. And what did it tell us in Genesis he did? What did he do on the seventh day? Oh, he man, rested. 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 He rested. rested. He rested. So it will be a 7,000 years of rest Rain. for I was, God. I was, I was thinking too. Much. But when we pick up next week, I'll, I'll give you the scriptures about the dead and stuff. I think we would get that far tonight. And then also I will talk about our rewards. Because we as the body of Christ, we get rewards for being caught up in the rapture. So I know that was a whole lot. And I know, but the, I know the tribulation is a kind of a scary part. You don't want to be here for it. But he will destroy the earth. And, and then we will, we will have officially ended our talk about the dispensations. And then after that, we'll go on to something else. So next week will be a, more of a review. So if you have questions about what we talked about thus far, write them down, jot them down, come prepared, bring your questions, and we'll go over everything else. It will be a review. We'll talk about a, a little bit more about the millennial reign and the rewards of the saints. And then the following week will go on. Amen. Amen. We thank you for joining us today. Amen. God has blessed us. Um, the council is coming up. The Minnesota, Wisconsin, Dakota District Council is coming up October 19th through the 22nd, which is next week. Um, Oh. In Appleton, Wisconsin, at Elder Ragnar's church. That was Apple, Al, Appleton Pentecostal. It's in, um, in the, the hotel, the council hotel is a double tree. Not the double tree, the Days Inn in Appleton. So um, look forward to seeing you there. Um, God, I'm sure we'll mighty move, but we will be back in the Do you know house. the speakers by chance? I know the speaker on Friday is Pastor. Raglan? Brat. Right. Okay. I think the speaker on Thursday is how or not. I'm not sure. I only know Brat. I looked at it real quickly. Mm -hmm. But we'll have the scripture, the speakers for you on Sunday. And if not, we can get the little flyer from the council and post it on our Facebook page. Um, it's good to see all those that are in the building and those of you joining online. If not, be here on Sunday. We had a wonderful time on Sunday. Our sister yeah. church, Pierce yeah. Faith, came over and worshiped with us. Evangelist Tanya Craig preached. God, I'm, cho I'm, ch I'm chosen. Yes. It's good to be chosen. It's good to be chosen. Like chosen by the best. Chosen, chosen by, by the best. best. So we want to be chosen by the best. So God is blessing us. Be here on Sunday at 12 for our Jubilee service. God will he'll send another mighty word of God. 
to encourage us because we want to encourage the people of God so they can get ready because the Lord is soon to come. I was just thinking this. I'm going to put this thought out there. You know, in the, in the tribulation, all that bad stuff is happening. And it's like God has given us a preview if you if you pay attention. So that hurricane, in, in the last 20 years, we've had some bad hurricanes come through the United States. We had Katrina come through, and it basically messed up anybody that was poor. Mm -hmm. Just think about it. It hit the liar and liar for the Lugas, and it, it messed up poor people badly. This hurricane hit Florida, and it messed up middle class people, people that are working and save money. And, and have nice houses and, and it, it destroy them. So God is showing us. Nobody he's showing is. us. He He's coming. And just because you have something, I mean, Katrina destroyed a lot of poor people. This one messed up a lot of people that had not big savings, but had worked and saved. I, I saw a couple, an elderly couple, they talked about, they had the 70s, that was their retirement home. Why should they rebuild? Now they gotta have to find somewhere to live. They want to go live with it. And most senior citizens that live down there are on what? So Fixed income. income. Yeah. They're also talking about the insurance company yes. is gonna mess up Florida because either most people either had flood or wind. Not a lot of people had both. both. And this tornado, this hurricane came through with flood and wind. And it messed up a lot of homes. So I said, God is trying to show us. Um the war in Ukraine, the pastor in Ukraine, he just sent a message to Pastor um, Raider Johnson, and he posted it on his church Facebook page, Greater Bethel. You know, that bomb came very close. They were showing pictures of people bloody, and they're still out there working and, and, and trying to help people. So keep the people of Ukraine, especially that pastor, I don't know his name, in prayer. He's, he's one of us. He's a baptized believer and filled with the Holy Ghost. So keep them in prayer because a bomb doesn't have a name on it. Amen. You don't know where it's going to fall. So it'll fall, whatever. And just keep, it, and keep those in prayer. We see. The times of are winding up. They're, they really are. We, we, I know I've heard it all my life. Pastor's heard it all his life. Anybody's been in the church of any number of times, you've heard it. And it's like, yeah, we see it. And we see how all the stuff is coming together, how everything could be seen. Before and before. So I want to keep that in your mind so that you get your, if you're not, if you're teetering on that, on that fence of undoubt, come on, come on over to the right side. Come on, come on, come on. Don't you want to go? There's another song that came to mind. This may be the last time. Maybe the last time. I don't know. So you want to get right. We want to get right. We want this word to encourage you to get right and live and be prepared for when God comes. Amen? Amen. So let's have a word of prayer. Gracious and most kind Father, we thank you for this day, this opportunity to magnify and bless your name. God, you're awesome in all things that you do. We may not understand it, but God, your word is going forth, is being fulfilled. Lord God, preparing your people because we'll be ready to go back to with you when you come. My Lord God, bless us as we leave this place never from your presence. Let us chew on this word, Lord God, that will get our lives in order, Lord God. Be ready. Keep blessing pastor, Lord God, healing, blessing his mind, encouraging his heart, encouraging his wife's heart and mind. Lord God, let us lift her up, Lord God. Let her be a saint that you'll have her to be in these last and evil days, Lord God. Bless those that are traveling, those that are going to and fro, those that are dealing with sickness, not even just physical sickness, but mental sickness. Lord God, you're a healer. You are a healer. Comfort those that are dealing with death, Lord God. Show them that you're a comforter, Lord God. Keep us, Lord God, until we meet again. In your name we pray.